Good evening and welcome, beloved, to this uh, special broadcast uh, from You Have Your Bibles. Uh, this is uh, what I would call unscripted, but I remember hearing something that uh, a pastor said that I looked up to for a number of years. I never had the occasion to uh, meet him. Uh, I followed his ministry from a distance, and that was... Dr. J. Vernon McGee, and he said that companies like Coca-Cola, that they have done a better job of marketing their messages than the church, and we are relatively predictive as to when you can expect to hear from those of us who have been called to teach and to preach God's word. But I wanted to come before you at this hour because there is a lot of a movement. This is what the world calls uh, Easter weekend. And uh, some of you, perhaps you've gone to your home church or you have gone to your neighborhood church and you have had fellowship uh, with the saints, those of you who are saved. But this weekend here is one of those weekends along with Mother's Day, that those who don't know the Lord, they will make their way out to uh, the church house, those that are still open. And there is a grave danger uh, in just going to church to uh, satisfy what may seem to be a need, perhaps maybe by someone that you care about, just to go in to participate in the events that transpire. I am reminded of my own life prior to Christ. Now, I didn't go to church on Easter, as it's called, uh, and I didn't go on Mother's Day. When I became old enough, <clears throat> I left the church and I had left it for good. But as I look back on it, I see a lot of folk who did that. And they have yet to come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the danger in that is, yes, sometimes the messages are given in such a way to meet the need of the masses, uh, and maybe not even a, a, a need, but just to, you, you've got a house filled of, of people, you know, sometimes I remember years when uh, the, the chairs being run down the aisle, and yes, the focus was upon the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, but there wasn't uh, a, such a, a message that was given with a command, with authority, that you need and you must repent of your sins and that you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in, in order to be saved. Beloved, the clear message after the resurrection of Christ was given to his holy apostles and that message is go and preach the gospel and the gospel doesn't have a, a time frame on it where you know we have to do it on the lord's day or wednesday night or what have you it's whenever the lord uh see fit for those who have been called to teach and to preach his word and i can remember hearing messages like all you have to do is believe. And that's what the Bible says. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Well, how do you believe? Is believing like approaching an empty chair and and sitting down in it? Is, is that the kind of faith? No, no. This is believing where you know that you are pressing into someone who can save you. And I want to read a portion of scripture to you. 
and just have a brief prayer. And then we'll get into the message that's on my heart. Here in Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to begin here in verse 13. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. And this is God who has done the delivering of all of those who have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So salvation is more than getting up and walking the aisle, making a profession of faith, and just going back and living your life. It is being transferred out of one kingdom into another. The kingdom in which those who are saved are translated into, it's like night and day. There isn't anything that's similar about the two kingdoms. It's like, as I said earlier, walking out of darkness that can be felt into light that can be experienced, radiant light. And the one who is the dear son is the Lord Jesus, the, the resurrected Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. And this is him, in verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, <clears throat> that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created. Notice this, all things were created by him. All things were created by the Son of God. That includes you and me and everything that we see that has been given life and existence apart from sin, evil, and wickedness. It was the Lord Jesus who created everything. He created everything for himself. That's what the passage goes on to say. Now, I realize that Resurrection Sunday and as it's called in the world, Easter weekend. It's festive. It's upbeat. And there's a lot of tempo. Families are getting together. There are uh, gatherings and socials and what have you. But, but have you considered the reason why you're here? Why don't you try to think back beyond your birthday? It's nothing but darkness. It's not that you did not exist before God because he knew that you would come into this world. The Lord Jesus is the one who created you. And for those of you who are not saved, and I know what that was like. Went out and made a lot of mistakes. Hurt a lot of folk. Did a lot of things that even at my age now. That I am still ashamed of. I, I realize I've been forgiven. But I'm ashamed of the life that I lived apart from Jesus Christ. And I say that to you beloved. That the longer you postpone. 
fully given your life to Christ. Where the life that you're living now versus the life that is only afforded in the Lord Jesus, they will look nothing like the life you're living now. And many of the folk who are tagging along with you and you're riding with and hanging out with, they will fall off. And the ones who don't, they'll get born again. I heard someone say this recently. Is that they hadn't planned on going back and doing some things that they had done in the past. But then there were some things that they saw growing up. From those in whom they looked up to. And these are things that are clearly in the word of God that are violations of a person who's truly a child of God. And I don't think that this individual was even considering the fact that, you know, he's a child of God. But Christ has gone through the expense of creating the world as we know it. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him. And he created everything for himself. Don't, don't cheapen your value by listening to what the world is marketing to suggest that you are someone and something that you're not. And not everything that you and I, we were taught growing up because some of the things we were instructed, but there were some things we caught. We, we just observed. We observed, especially coming from a guy's perspective. I observed when the guys got together and started drinking. And they cursed. And they talked about women. And they never elevated them. They always talked about them in the, in the negative. It was all as if they were just a slab of meat. A, a, a red bone, a, a yellow bone, a, a whatever. But those things are caught, meaning they're taught without you recognizing it. And I'm sure it's true with women hearing women talk. But because you emulate someone that you looked up to, listen, that person, if that person is not the Lord Jesus Christ, you are following someone who's not going anywhere. And no matter what you think about who they are, they could be very religious and they could be well educated and they could have, you know, financially be well off. But if they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, they have nothing with God because Jesus Christ is the only treasure that God has given to man and it consists of life. And it more abundantly. I remember hearing folk in the church say, all you have to do is believe. Well, I, I thought I believed that Jesus, you know, he's the son of God and that he, he died for my sins. But it was in the abstract. It made no difference to my life. It wasn't governing how I thought what I said out of my mouth. And I do know this from the scriptures is that whom God is going to save, he's saving to be holy, not to be worldly. I, I so despise the life that I lived and the man that I was, and I wasn't a man. Because if you ask where it was Dennis, somebody would say, we down the road with who? Who was he down the road with? He down the road with the boys. D do you think that's a coincidence? That men were referred to when we were just sowing caution to the wind as being boys. And we were boys. Preached the message a few mothers two days ago. And, and I know a little something about this. Young girl, she trusts a, a young boy. And she commits an act that's reserved for those who are married. Chances are he was the one who talked her into it. She didn't want to. She probably had heard some things. She was exposed. 
He was her boyfriend. But she ended up pregnant. When she told mama in most cases, she, she probably still had a mama. <laughs> told daddy if she survived maybe not being killed. And I, and I say that uh, tongue in cheek. But when she told her boyfriend, she lost the only friend, hear me, the only friend that she never had. That's what I'm talking about. That's what the world packages and markets. And, and it goes through the church. And, and the church, we don't address it. Because we're so glad that you showed up. And we hope you come back. Because we can't do church without you. My God. And you have us repeating the sins of our parents. Because they repeated the sins of their parents. Our grandparents. And this stuff happens in the church. And there's supposed to be lines of demarcation in the church where it's the will of God. And if you're outside of the will of God... That you ought to know that you are. Now a lot of folk can't handle that. They can't handle someone telling me how I should live my life. Beloved, let me just say this from the kingdom of God perspective. You don't have a life. If you don't have the Lord Jesus, what's awaiting you is judgment. Because what your father and your mother gave you. And God was the one who ordained it. You were elected in creation. All right, for my theologians out there, don't get nervous. You were elected in creation in the first Adam. The man Adam, who was of this earth. Through him, that's where your parents came from. And we are here, and God brought us here. But think about it. None of our parents were able to conceive us, bring us into this world, and that be heaven? As far as our natural-born parents could get us was here. But here's not good enough with God. We have to be born from above. So you take the person who leaves this world and there is a divide between going into the presence of God or not going into the presence of God. It's called death. It's where it's appointed unto man that we all die once. That's being separated from the body. It's when the host, the real you, for those of you who are looking at me, you're looking out of your soul at me through the eyes, the windows of your soul. How can those who have been born of natural parents come into this world and span the, the bridge the chasm between this life and the next life, you can't do it through just being born. You can't do it through just going to church. You, you can't do it by just joining the church and becoming water baptized. You have to be rescued and saved. And, and see, if, if you've never been saved, which means you recognize that someone greater than you had to come get you because where you were, you couldn't do anything about your situation to change it. We were, before God, we all were born stillborn. And I'm using a natural term to, to get across a spiritual principle. What that means, stillborn. We, we were born dead. Dead and Sins and trespasses. Adam's sin not only caused our nature to become 
contaminated and we suffered from what is called a sin nature. That's why we do the things we do. That's why none of your parents and my grandparents who raised me had to teach me how to do wrong. They, they spent their time teaching me to do what God has said in his word. Don't get angry. That doesn't belong to you. Put it back. No, you, you can't just hit someone like that. Things that are in God's word, but the parents were doing that to teach us. And see, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, the chasm between death and entering into God's presence has been wrought through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have too many folk going to church, carrying their Bible and talking about Jesus Christ and God and things that are brought up in church attendance. But they have no connection with the kingdom of God. Because in the kingdom of God, there are some things uh, that are you can't do once you get saved. You, you can't just go out and do what you want with your body. Because you don't have one no more. No, you're not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And see, now you don't even have a life once you come to saving knowledge in the Lord Jesus. How so? Because your life is with Christ and it's hid with him and with God. Don't let these folk in these churches who just want you to come back so they can have someone sitting in a seat so they can brag to their colleagues and say, look at what we have going on over here. Your natural born life, when you come to that time when you're going to go like all of us, barring the Lord Jesus coming back for his church, when we go the way of all the earth, you're going to need a transport. You're going to need someone who has given you life that would be sufficient before God. And the only life that God will accept in his presence is that of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not accepting our works. He's not accepting our filthy righteousness. And you take today. You have folk who have stuck their chests out in some of these gatherings, because they finally have shown up, you know, after a year since the last, what, Mother's Day, they done showed up, and, and then, and you know something, we have the nerve that when they do show up in the church, well, welcome brother so-and-so, and, and sister so-and-so, some deacon will get back and, and, and pull his pants up in front of the church, well, it's so good to see this, that, and the other, you know something, no, I, I don't know who my biological father is. And for those of you who are out there, and you're young and you're having children, you teach your, teach your children something about abstinence, refraining from the activities of a married couple within the privacy of their own chamber. No, I don't know who my biological father is. And, and, and this is something, you know, when you don't know who your biological father is, everybody knows who your biological father is. Well, I'm going to tell you something. God doesn't have that trouble because he knows who all of his children are. And we accept folk who come in on Mother's Day and on what is called Easter Sunday, which is, is Resurrection Sunday in, in the true house of God. And everyone is somebody. And, and back in the 80s, there was a phrase corn because the phrase was corn because everybody wanted to do what everybody was doing. You had women wanting to do what men was doing in the church. So this is the church where everybody is somebody. So in those gatherings, they make you feel comfortable. You show up, you dressed up, you looking good. I mean, you, yeah, you're right. You, 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 I can't say that. I won't say that. But you look good. But how do you look before God? You go to church and, and folks slap you on the back. You have deacons and preachers, you know, so glad to see you and all of that. And then what do you do afterwards? You go out, you eat, you drink. Some of you, I mean, let's just be real. I, I know something about this. No, I didn't go to church. 
But I was the one who was at some of these functions. And I want to say what I open up with. Dr. McGee, you say, he would say, listen, Coca-Cola has done a better job of marketing their product than we the church. We feel like we have to have a certain time that we have to come before God's people or come before sinners. Let me tell you something. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the message after that was to go ye therefore and teach all nations. And he didn't give us a certain time. It's when the spirit moves. So that chasm between this life and the next life, the only way to get over that is to have Christ. He's the one who gives life. He's the one who is our life. He is our sufficiency. And you're not going to be able to enter into the presence of God without him. Because if you do, you're going to meet your judge. And he's going to judge you severely. You will not be judged as one of his. You will be judged as one of those who violated the commandment of the kingdom of God. God is not. Will you please, you know, I have this offer that I want to give to you of eternal life, but you don't have to receive it. No, he's commanding us to receive this. He created us to do his will. And the only way to do his will first, you can do it before you get saved. By repentance. And that's where the Spirit of God reveals you to you. Have you ever seen you? I used to have a great big old afro. More hair on my head than the law allowed. Oh, I thought I was something. I thought I was something special. And I was special. Oh, yeah, I was special, all right. I was on that list of those who were on their way to hell. And I had some folk that were following me. But I thank my God that the lady that I'm married to, who at that time was my girlfriend, she took all that she could take of someone who was special. Then a lady came through here from Blackstone, Virginia, down through rural King and Queen County. And she was teaching women, and yeah, she taught some men also. And my wife, now girlfriend, then she gave her life to Christ. She put me out, which was really she made two. Well, the girl, I tell you something, God will give you wisdom. She she gave her life to the Lord Jesus, and then she put me out. Why did she put me out? We weren't married, and I I didn't want to get married. I didn't want nothing. You know, all I wanted to do was go down the road and hang out with the guys. But those ladies, they prayed for me. And I'm sure there were others. They prayed for me when I would talk about them. They prayed for me when I would come by and they were having a little Bible study. And, I, and I'd walk up in there because I, I couldn't live there, but I'd walk up in there with a beer. And, and I made them feel uncomfortable. Yeah, they felt uncomfortable. But they knew God. <laughs> you know something? They kept praying, and I went to a Bible study, and I sat there, and, and, I, and I heard God's word taught. I heard it taught by this lady, and I hadn't heard that before. I, I really hadn't heard the word of God taught, and in the process of time, I went to church. I'll never forget it. Reverend Roy would preach on third Sunday. And, and he had this saying is that all you have to do is put your hand in God's hand. Yeah, you know, I didn't know how you do that, but afterward, I went to where I was living with my girlfriend and, and I asked her, I said, you have a Bible? And she gave me a paperback called the book. And I went back in my baby girl's room and Close the door. Glory to God. And I got down to business with God. No, I didn't read John 3.16. I didn't read where it talks about that the wages of sin is death. But I heard some of this along the way. 
I open the scriptures to the very first scripture, the very first verse. In the beginning, and it was paraphrased, God created the heavens and the earth. And you want to know something? The reality of who I was, where I was, what I had done, in the presence of, it was as if God was there. I didn't see him. The room didn't lighten up because I was darkness. I was just like John Bunyan. John Bunyan said, not only was I a sinner, I was sin. He revealed me to me. And my life passed before me. I, I didn't look so special anymore. I didn't look good in my own eyes. In a dread, a dread of God flooded my soul. A fear. That since God is, man, he going to judge me. And you know something? I was totally in agreement with him judging me because I deserved it. And I did what Lazarus did. You said, how do you know what Lazarus did? Lazarus was a beggar. I begged him to forgive me of my sins. I pleaded with him. And, and I, and I clung to Jesus Christ and, and I believed on him with my heart. In my mind, I was finished with sin. I was done with it. And that doesn't mean I became sinless perfection or anything like that in my activities. But in my mind, had he called me home right afterward, it would have been reported in the kingdom of God that he was finished with sin. I took him out of here, but he didn't. And in my heart, Give my life to Christ. I went back. Well, it didn't quite happen that fast, but with a whole lot of tears and, and a whole lot of other stuff. I went back and I, and I gave the Bible back to my wife now. And I told her, I said, I, I just gave my life to Christ. And she looked at me because up to that point, most of what I said, well, you couldn't take it to the bank. That was a big check you couldn't cash. She looked at me strangely, and she should have. And I went on my way. Next morning, I didn't know what was going to happen. Went to work. Walk in. I was a manager. Get that to the coffee pot. Mr. Ethert Leonard, Leonard, he was there, and he said, well, well Dabney, how was your weekend? I said, Mr. Leonard, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus. And you want to know something? I found out that he had given his life to Christ, but he never witnessed to me. You know, as I went through the office and I, you know, I even went to Greenbelt, Maryland, and, and, I, and I met folk that, you know, that everybody's a Christian. <laughs> Go figure. Nobody witnessed to me. They left me out there. And not only them, the church didn't witness to me. I live Less than five miles from the church, no one evangelized me. You want to know why they didn't? Because most of the folk were doing everything that I was doing. I come into the church, and back then, I'll be honest with you, you know, that was a time in my life when I was very outspoken as a, as a youth. And then I had sin in my life, and I went inward. I mean, the teacher, if the teacher called on me out, I'd become petrified. I wouldn't like that in the, in like the first few, few grades in school. But I had sin in my life. Man, after that, I was in the church and I said, I stood up and said, I said, listen, if you don't see me here, y'all come looking for me. Because I knew that I was saved and I, and I know I need to be in a church that I didn't necessarily need to be where I was at. I stayed there. Because see, I'm different now. All I have is the word of God. So I just consumed this book. And then I was about to go join the fellowship with this lady. And the Lord spoke to me. The, the one and only time he spoke to me. To let me know that that was not what I was supposed to do. He told me to get into his word. And I told them why I couldn't join. I appreciated what had been done for me. The prayers that had been offered. I, I couldn't join this fellowship. And all I did was just consume God's word. And I looked at the word of God and I looked at the church. I looked at God's word. I looked at the church. And you want to know something? 
The two of them were at odds. What I saw didn't line up with the word of God. Now, some of what was in the word of God, I saw as a child. But they were doing this because that's what they inherited. As far back, I'm sure, as the brush arbor meeting. But when I come to the church, the music had changed. I mean, those of you who know anything about world music, it sounded like club music. It sounded like hole-in-the-wall music. It wasn't the kind of music that, that's God-exalting and God-glorifying and Christ-exalting. Beat, the music was so loud. The bass line, folk were shaking themselves. Folk were inappropriately dressed. And they called the church. They called the church. They had a steeple. They had their padded pews. I mean, they had a, a facility. They had property. But a church, you have the word of God. You want to know the landmark of the church? is an open Bible, beloved. Don't let them fool you. That's why I came on here tonight. Some of you, I mean, yeah, yeah, you, you, you've eaten your ham, you, you've eaten your potato salad and your greens, and you've drank some Kool-Aid and all of that stuff. And some of you, you drank and you got alcohol in you, and you've got weed in you, and you got drugs in you. Listen, I'm coming after you because God wants you to be saved. He wants you to be born into his kingdom. He wants you to know the truth. He wants you to know the one who had all power. He said, I received a commandment from my father. I have power to lay my life down. And I have the power, the commandment to take my life up. No man takes my life from me. I like to say it this way. He was man enough to lay his, man, his life down as the son of man. But he, as the son of God, he was the God man. He was the son of God. He was God manifested in the flesh. Listen, your future, you want to know where you're headed? You want to know where you're going? You want to know where you're going to end up? You're coming to Jesus Christ one way or another, dead or alive. You're coming to Christ. Beloved, it would behoove you to listen to this poor preacher. And those whom God has sent to you, those who have given you tracks, those who have gotten on your last nerve, every time you turn around, they come, have you given your life to Christ yet, little girl? And you say, I'm not no little girl, lady. God is sending folk after you the same way he did me. And all he wants you to do is just surrender, yield, give your life to him. Because the life that you inherited from your parents going to come short at death door. Who are you following? Are you still following some of those sayings of your parents that you can't find in the word of God? And some of it may have truth. Are you still acting out what you saw in your own home growing up, around the neighborhood? Those things are nothing but filler. They're just taking up time in your life that you don't have. I'll say it like this. I, I don't know how many more resurrection Lord days we're going to have. I like the one we just had because things are changing. Things are shifting right before our eyes. And you want to know something? The kingdom of darkness now is so bold and brazen. Until they're almost telling us what they're getting ready to do. And you want to know something? Those of you in the world, you all you want to do is just, well, they just saying everything's going to be all right. I'm telling you, everything's not going to be all right if you're not saved. You have judgment ahead of you. And if you are saved, no, everything's still not going to be all right. Because you're going to have to suffer some persecution. Christ suffered greatly just before he left here. Before the church leaves here, the church will know something about suffering and persecution. But the church is at her finest hour when she is persecuted, when she's being run down, when she's being mocked and ridiculed, when even the religious folk don't want to see you coming. And politicians, they despise you. And those from the world of academia, listen, they have some choice names for you. Young man, young woman, 
Those of you who are not saved, what are you waiting on? You, are you waiting for, uh, you know, a, a better time? No, today is the day of salvation. Right now. See, we, we preach a, a message that has a shelf life. It's today. Now, if you get tomorrow, well, we'll say it's tomorrow, but it's today. Today is the day of salvation. When can you be saved? Now is the acceptable time. But but don't do it superficially. Allow the Spirit of God to convict you of sin because you have yet to believe on the Lord Jesus. And you want to know why you haven't believed on the Lord Jesus? It's because you're already in love. You love you and you love your sin. Of righteousness because he said, I'm going to be with my father. And he's done that. He's been raised from the dead bodily. And he has ascended back to the right hand of the majesty on high. And you want to know something? Because of righteousness, it's not because of your righteousness. Don't let folk in the church make you think you're right with God. When you're not. When you're living in sin. And you know you're living in sin. You know you're not right with God. Allow the Spirit of God to convict you and let you know he has already judged the one that we were following. He's judged the father of lies, the God of this world. He's judged him. So wait a minute. Let's just, just connect the dots. If he has judged our father, the one whom we were deceived by, who has blinded the minds of those who have yet to believe the gospel, and you still following him? He already been judged. Oh, so you think you're not going to be judged? You're going to be judged by the same one that judged him. He going to judge you. And what you look like? Ending up leaving this world going to Hades. Then coming up for judgment. And then ending up in the lake of fire with the father of lies. See, see we're all going, we're all going to end up with our father. Don't let those folk in the church fool you. You're going to end up with your daddy. You're going to end up with God the Father. Abba Father. Abba Father. You're going to either end up with him or you're going to end up with the father of lies. I, I, well, well, Pastor, how do I know if I'm going to end up with the father of lies? If you don't know that, go back to step one. Let the Spirit of God show you to you. See, what has happened in the church, we have been in such, we, we just got to get folk to believe. We got to get more baptisms. We got to get more folks sitting in the pews. We got to get this house filled, and we also want to get these coffers filled with these tithes and these offerings and whatnots. Because folk don't always give tithes and offerings. They give wedding rings. They give property. I was in one church, and, and they give you they gave land to the church. And nothing wrong with that if you saved. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them dupe you. Don't let them cause you to think you're right with God. Watch this. When they're not right with God. If they, you like, you're going to be like your teacher. You're going to live your life based on the life your teacher living because you want to know something. You sit under them. That's why you have to be careful. You open your spirit up to them. If you're, You don't want to end up with the one that we started out with in the world. The father of lies. That explains everything as to why you did what you did and why I did what I did. Let the Spirit of God reveal you to you. And you won't look so attractive. You won't even look attractive to God. And you are because Jesus Christ was a, was a, was a, was a sinner's magnet. He drew sinners. To himself. Glory to God. He, he, listen, he didn't come to, to heal the, 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 those who weren't sick. He come to save sinners. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. You'll be like me. You'll be like, I got some kinfolk. I got some brethren and some sisters. You, you know you're not what you used to be because you don't see yourself the same way that you was. You recognize, and if he talks about the nations as being as small dust, apart from Christ, we recognize we're nothing. 
Beloved, just before I close, I, I want to just pray for you. And I have some brothers and sisters on here tonight that would be glad, not knowing who you are, to lift you up before God so that you, on this 2022, what better time to give your life to Christ than on Resurrection Lord Day? And I got to look at the clock. It's almost here in the East Coast. It's, it's almost uh, another day. What better day? To, to get right with God. No, no, don't put it off till your children grow up. And, and, and you done made up in your mind, well, when, when my children grow up and, 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 and they go to the club where I'm going to, I don't want them to see me. Listen, you may not live long enough to do it. Give your life to him. When the Spirit of God convicts you, reveals you, and the dread of judgment comes across your spirit, give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Before it is everlasting too late. Eternal Father in heaven. In the name of the one who laid his life down. But had power to take it up again. The Lord Jesus Christ. I bring those who may be listening now. Along with my brothers and sisters. We bring those who will also listen later to this broadcast. And that as you engage them in a conversation and they get past my voice, but they hear that, that still small voice of revealing themselves to themselves, that they will cry out and beg, beg for forgiveness. Lord, I pray that you'd save all, Lord, because it's not your will that any should perish. That you save the young and the old. That you bring them in. That man and you, you use him in your kingdom. That woman, you bring her in. You use her in your kingdom. Lord, we're praying for the lost. Father, save. Far and near. Broad. And the one right now that will hear this who has less time than all of us, that they'd be saved before it is everlasting too late. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, your goodness, your long-suffering, your generosity, your faithfulness, your sovereignty. But we thank you for your holiness. We thank you that you're God. There's no one beside you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you all so much for joining in and uh, spending time with this poor preacher. I'm so grateful to have those of you who have logged on at this hour. Well, beloved, until next time, be blessed.